Hello everyone, this is Metroid Nerd number 9001 and I just wanted to make a quick video talking about the map and the progression of the map from Super Metroid Hotland. I've been meaning to make this video for a long time but I've finally gotten around to actually doing it. And what you can see on the screen is one of the oldest versions of the map that I drew for Hotland. I drew it on graph paper and this is what I do for a lot of my maps so you'll see that I do a lot of planning for the progression of the hack ahead of time. I'll have these little notes such as missiles, planning out where things are going to be, where you need quote unquote certain things or where you actually need certain things to go. There's a lot of other things that are not very clear that I usually just figure out as I'm building the hack and they're not essential to the actual progression of the hack but there are other details such as needing grapple or needing certain other items that I plan pretty early on. And even these things can change like in this you can see from my eraser marks that I have the Morph Ball here as my first idea, but then I'm like, oh wait, I can put Grapple here, and then you need Grapple to get across here, or you use it to get missiles, and then Morph Ball is down here. Or some other racing that I did, where I originally had a save here, which very clearly imitated the original game, but I moved it down here, because I thought it would fit the map better, especially once I started building the rooms. I'm like, oh no, I think it fits better to have a save point here. There's a lot of little details like that, or like needing supers to get down here. There's small little details that I have in this that are kind of crucial to the progression that I planned pretty early on. And although everything is subject to change, it's important when you're making something like this to at least have a plan going in. Now that plan obviously can change as you'll see in the next slide how different the map is when I actually finish it. There are a lot of parts of the map that really didn't change very much, especially in the top half of it, but especially in the middle and in the core, you'll see, and if you've played the hack, you know what I'm talking about, that you'll see there were a lot of changes. Now in the second version of the map, I have a little bit more planning and a little bit more in the means of the item progression, but the big change here is that the secret grove has been added. The secret grove actually wasn't in my original plan for this hack, but I'm like, a few months in, I was building this hack and I was like, you know, I have time to do something. I have this tile set from Phazon Web that I can use. I have pink shell that I wanted to put in a hack at some point. So I'm like, I'm going to have a little secret area and I'm going to use that to figure out how to use Power Rush in the hack. Because originally Power Rush was just going to be here. But then it ended up actually being most people's favorite parts of the hack. And I guess it might shock some of you to know that Power Rush wasn't in the original plan for this hack. It actually came a lot later. So here, I have the two maps side by side just so I can easily show some comparison points. You can see there was this giant gap in the middle of the core and I fit the entire secret grove into it. And you can also tell that the mini bosses that I used with the custom graphics and the custom music also weren't in the original version of the hack. I originally had charge beam in the area where the first mini boss was, but then I thought to myself, hey, I could make charge beam just in this little area and super missiles are the reward for the first mini boss. And then I did the whole Metroid 2 thing where beating the boss lowers the lava and that's how you get your super missiles. And after I came up with that first one, I'm like, how else can I use this? So then I added an optional mini boss over here and changed this E tank out of this part of the room and instead shifted it over a little bit and that's how you got that E tank with this hidden mini boss. And I added a room over here and like I can put a mini boss here and lower the lava here. I hadn't built a lot of the rooms in the core at this point so I didn't have to do that much changing of these rooms. I had already done a little bit of building I believe at this point at the point where I started coming up with the mini bosses. But a lot of these reroutes didn't actually require that much changing to level design I had already made. One of my favorite other changes I made was I added the mini boss here later, pretty late in development of the hack. Because my thought process was, why would the space pirates just let you walk into the final boss? There should be some kind of base or some kind of guardian that they have there in order to keep you from just waltzing in. So I had the idea that there's a little space pirate computer mini boss right here and there's a little ninja pirate room and I made that the thing you have to beat before you can actually access the core. There's a couple of other minor differences in room design you can see such as how I changed the progression of the rooms around screw attack. Originally this would have been two items that you got just coming from below but instead I made it that you come from above after you get screw attack and that's how you move on your way down. 
I also added the super missile block puzzle here and in addition I added the refill bugs pretty late I think because I thought it would be a pretty good idea to have refill bugs when you're gonna require people to use super missiles to open gates. Spazer also changed locations because I wanted to make it a little bit more hidden. So I moved it onto a little secret room and just had this upper alcove area be kind of pointless. When Oats and Goats played the hack, he actually pointed out that no room in this hack is pointless. But this is actually kind of the exception. This little dead end area is the one skull in the game where there's a dead end and there is absolutely nothing for you to do. And that's just a remnant of the fact that Spazer used to be up there but now it's right adjacent to it through a little secret passage. You can even tell from my eraser marks that this went through multiple iterations. I was originally going to have Spazer be up here in this scroll, but then I'm like, oh, I could make it a secret and I'll put it right here above the map. One other change I made before the final release of the hack was I added a room connecting Power Rush underneath the rocket that the animals are in. This isn't reflected in this map and I haven't actually updated it because that was a pretty last minute change, but it's worth noting that that's also here. So even extremely late in development, there are minor tweaks to the map. And there's even some clarifications I do later on. Originally, I had marked most of these as just goodies because I had no idea idea what type of stuff I wanted to put there because I didn't know what the balancing would feel like at the point you got there or what kinds of items I wanted the totals to be. Whereas on the final map you can see I have plotted out the item totals and all of the items are labeled here on each of the items instead of just being labeled as goodies. But yeah, I think that's all the changes I really wanted to show off. Kind of showing off a little bit of my thought process when I'm building the maps of these hacks. Kind of how I do it, what I'm thinking of when I do it, and how the process changes over time. There's one last thing I want to do though. Ambryon makes maps of a lot of hacks, and they made a map of Hotlands that I just wanted to show off here really quickly. There's a lot of detail that goes into these maps that really you can't do the justice of when you see it at this zoomed out of a level. Basically every tile in the hack is accounted for, which allows you to see the contours of the terrain within the hack. Even the gates and the doors are very detailed. So I just wanted to give a shout out to the map and I'll put a link to where all of these maps are on Metroid Construction in the description of this video because you really should look at these maps of hacks because they are exquisite. Yeah, that's about all I wanted to cover today. This has been Metroid Nerd number 9001. I hope you enjoyed the video, and I will see you next time.